In the remote past, more than three million years ago, a tiny female lived by a lake on the edge of the lush forests of Africa. She was part ape, part human. She lived a brief life, but her story continues to unfold. By an extraordinary set of circumstances, she left tantalizing clues to her life and our origins. Who was she, and what can we discover about this earliest of our most ancient ancestors? We know she existed because we found these, her fossilized bones, in the very spot where she died all those years ago. Fossils like these are so rare that they're even harder to find than diamonds. But they're the key to understanding our origins, knowing who our ancestors were and how they lived. I can make a good guess about how our earliest ancestor might have been preserved millions of years ago. She wasn't killed by a predator, she died a natural death. Undiscovered by scavengers, her body simply sank into the soft sediments of the lake. There, lying undisturbed, her flesh slowly rotted away. Sand and gravel washed in by heavy rains gradually covered the bones. Over the millennia, hundreds of feet of sediments built up, burying the bones deeper and deeper. Minerals from the sediments gradually replaced the calcium of her bones, almost molecule by molecule, turning them to stone. Over the next few million years, she remained buried. But the movement of the Earth's crust, continuing to enlarge the Great Rift, brought her ancient grave closer to the surface. There she lay until rains cut down through the Earth, and one heavy storm brought her to light again. At the time of our earliest ancestors, this place was lush and green. Back then, there were rivers and lakes with communities of animals living in and beside the water. Here were the pigs and the elephants whose fossils we found. How did her upright stance, her ability to walk on two legs, help Lucy and her kind compete in a new and changing world? Lucy probably became a walker while still very much dependent on the forest for food. But when the forest became sparse and times got tough, Lucy and her kind could still survive by walking across the grasslands to reach the clumps of trees where her food was found. and her hands were free to collect and carry the valuable food she found. This slight advantage was all she needed. While the other apes declined, 
Lucy and her kind flourished. And what about Lucy herself? What did she look like? We know from the teeth, the jaw, and now the skull fragments we found that Lucy had an ape-like face with a brain just a little larger than a chimp's. She may have had dark skin and patchy hair to protect her from the sun. Walking upright freed her hands to develop a more precise grip than other apes, more like our own. And even with her small brain, perhaps she was beginning to have a more human-like awareness of herself and her surroundings. Lucy and her kind must have been extraordinary creatures. We know that they persisted as a species virtually unchanged for over a million years. That's ten times as long as we ourselves have been around. We know that they led relatively simple lives because one key feature was missing from their behavior. Yet a few hundred thousand years after Lucy, some of her descendants made a major breakthrough, a breakthrough that would have profound influence on our own evolution. They began to make these stone tools. Who made these tools and why? They are a clue to the next chapter in the search for human origins.